Hey, what's up everyone? Ultimate Atomic HD here and welcome to yet another top 10 list. And in today's video, we'll be counting down the top 10 best Yu-Gi-Oh cards that were bundled with Yu-Gi-Oh video games. And those Yu-Gi-Oh video game promo cards tended to be really bad in terms of uh, their overall applicability. However, sometimes Konami would strike gold with the, these inclusions and g actually give us something playable. And those are exactly the cards we're counting down today. So without further ado, let's get into it. Starting us off at the number 10 spot, we have a double entry of Sinister Serpent and Destiny Hero Disc Commander. A double entry of cards which made the graveyard their second home back in the day. Sinister Serpent, who was bundled with the Stairway to the Destined Duel game, was prime discard father back in the day with his infinite recyclability, and Destiny Hero Disc Commander, who was bundled with the 2007 World Championship game, was a generic pot of greed when he was special summoned from the graveyard which made him stuck on the ban list for years until he got an errata. However, the key word bo both of these uh, share is back in the day, since the archetypes have their own better discard father in this day and age, so Sinister Serpent is regarded as obsolete, even with his errata not helping things. And this commander, like I mentioned before, also got an errata, which made its effect super slow and unreliable to use consistently, so all we can do now is appreciate how good they used to be, and that's why they're only on the number 10 spot. Continuing on to the number 9 spot, we have Dimensional Prison. This trap was included in the 2008 World Championship game and was a much sought after card because this was the time when non-destruction removal was becoming more and more valuable with the arrival of my beloved Stardust Dragon onto the meta scene, who provided protection from destruction effects and remained a staple for so many years. Nowadays, Dimensional Prism doesn't see as much play due to battle traps falling out of favor noticeably, with the game speeding up immensely, but for decks which are more control-oriented or focused on stalling, it could still be a decent choice in the deck. On the number 8 spot, we have Dark Lord Nurse Reficule. This monster was included in Tag Force Evolution, which was a PS2 port of Tag Force 1. The main component of the very well-known Nurse Burn deck, which has been seeing competitive success since this card was first released, and gave the competitive edge to some of those shitty cards which increase your, the opponent's life points. Not to mention it's one of the easier burn strategies to build your deck around, as the only other card that has this effect, that being bad reactions to Simochi, is an unsearchable continuous trap. It's also one of the main reasons why Upstart Goblin is limited, since you essentially play a 37 card deck and the opponent starts with 5000 life points essentially, which makes this card pretty interesting in this regard. On the lucky number 7 we have Crimson Blader. This level 8 synchro was included in Tag Force 6, which unfortunately was never released internationally. Even though this card came out during the transition between the period of Synchro and the Xyz era, this card still saw competitive play due to being able to provide major disadvantage to all decks focused on bringing out higher level monsters, and this even included Dragon Rulers which were a huge threat back in the day, and the reason why they're still chilling on the ban list with the exception of Tempest who is limited at the time of recording this video. Nowadays he doesn't see all that much play due to meta being mostly populated by Link monsters, but if the remaining Dragon Rulers were released from the ban list, I can guarantee you that Crimson Blader would start seeing massive competitive play once more. Just missing out of the top 5 portion, we have Liberty at last. This is the second and last trap card on the list, this one being included in Tag Force 5 and it spawned a debate whether it's better than Penguin Soldier or not. While Penguin Soldier was more versatile and applicable, it only bounced back to the hand which wasn't a bad removal effect at all, while Liberty specifically required two monsters for the effect to go off, and it needed a monster being destroyed by battle for the effect to take place. However, the removal effect was a lot stronger with Liberty since it shuffled the targets into the deck, making them harder to get back. 
Not to mention, this card actually received a support card which can easily search it, meaning it's a bit uh, more on par with Penguin Soldier who had some support making him searchable before. In my honest opinion, both of these cards are worth running as a funky surprise from the side deck if anything. Starting off the top 5 portion of the list, we have Spell Striker and Gal is the Star Beast. Another double entry, this time featuring a pair of extenders. Spell Striker, who was included in the same game as this commander, is a very searchable and simple to use extender which can be special summoned from your hand by banishing a spell card from your graveyard. While Gal is the Star Beast, which was included with Tag Force 3, is a great choice for monster mash decks as it allows you to send the top card of your deck to the graveyard and if it was a monster you burn the opponent for its level times 200 and special summon Gallus to your field, otherwise he gets destroyed. I don't think I need to explain why getting free summon materials is good and why having easy access to it is even better. And as an added bonus, Gallus even has an OTK built around its burn effect. However, the next entry can provide you with even more advantage. Making its way to the number 4 spot, we have Microcoder and Cyanet Codec. This is the last double entry that will be featured on the list and both of these were included in Legacy of the Duelist Link Evolution. Microcoder is a level 1 monster which has the ability to be used as Link material while it's in your hand if you're summoning a Code Talker monster. And if it's sent to the graveyard as link material from the hand or field, you get to search a Cyanet spell or trap from your deck. And if it's sent from the field specifically, then you can search a level 4 Cybers monster from your deck instead. All in all, this is a fantastic extender for Cybers decks, uh, seeing how Code Talkers are very prevalent in those decks. But it gets even better when Cyanet Codec is thrown into the mix, which is by the way searchable with Microcoder as this card allows you to search out any cybers monster from your deck that corresponds to the attribute of the code talker that you summoned, which makes it one of the most varied searchers in the game and the reason why code talkers are the main cog in the extra link engine. Taking the bronze medal of this list, we have Infernity Archfiend. I am sure many of you were surprised to see this card on the list. The heart, face and soul of the Infernity archetype was included with the Stardust Accelerator game and it was in fact this very game that introduced one of the most iconic searchers into the game and if people knew how good the card would later become then Stardust Accelerator would be the best selling Yu-Gi-Oh game of all time. I'm even imagining scenarios where of people buying 3 copies of the game just for an Archfiend playset which I don't think would have happened given how pricey games tend to be but still. Taking the silver medal of this list, we have Mind Control. This is one of our two only spell cards on the list and it was included in 7 Trials to Glory game. Compared to Change of Heart and the pre Errata Brain Control and especially Snatch Steel, this card wouldn't pass as all that impressive back then. But as time went on and this card's value would soon skyrocket as it would become the only legal card which offered generic monster snatching and it's the reason why it's limited to this day. Nowadays it's still a fantastic card but its usage has begun to dwindle a bit with change of heart now back at 1. However there's still one more entry which I'm honestly surprised that it was even a promo card back then. And taking the golden number one spot, we have Harpy's Feather Duster, the ultimate back row destruction card which was included in the same game as Sinister Serpent. This card rightfully takes the number one spot because opponent only nukes are always going to be relevant in some shape or form and this card is no exception. The only negative I can point out with it is that people tend to ignore it despite it being finally off the ban list after a long time because of the existence of Lightning Storm which eliminates the need to run Rageki or Feather Duster separately, but in return, the card this powerful being a part of an archetype is actually really beneficial since some cards within the Harpy archetype can actually search it, which is a huge plus. It would be cool if Raigeki got a similar treatment, but I guess the game isn't ready for searchable Raigekis just yet. And just like that, we are done with yet another top 10 list. Stay tuned for the next one. Thank you all so much for watching. Stay tuned for more Red Book 2s and updates. Comment, like, and subscribe. Be sure to check out my Patreon when you got the time. Maybe drop a few donations if you feel like it. And as usual, I'll upload the next vid whenever I can. So see you all and have a good day. Peace.